afternoon friends uh, it's my pleasure and privilege to welcome you all to the fourth lecture in the distinguished lecture series on energy efficiency the objective of this lecture series is listen to experts achievers knowledgeable persons in the field of energy efficiency to share their knowledge their experience and their perspectives so that we gain from their nuggets of wisdom which they have gained over a period of time we have benefited substantially from the earlier uh, three lectures mr ravi chandran mr unni krishnan mr ranganath they spoke extensively about uh, the energy efficiency aspects on uh, industrial sector today we have an expert from the building sector to speak to us on his perspectives on energy efficiency in building sector and built environment we are privileged to have uh, mr v suresh chairman indian green building council addressing us you know dr watson when describing about the, the masterly detective sherlock holmes calls him as an encyclopedia of crimes a walking calendar of crimes perhaps in a similar way mr v suresh is a living encyclopedia of the building and built built environments which year which legislation came up which code came up in the building sector you ask mr v suresh you immediately get the answer what it went through what are the number of smart cities what's happening in each of these smart cities and which of the developments are taking place where mr v suresh has uh, the most intimate knowledge of the of the, of the uh, building sector another unique thing with uh, mr v suresh is that uh, he can deliberate on the very high level policy initiative as well as go into micro details in terms of insulation of a brick and uh, and uh, and a glass what perhaps mr v suresh does not know with regard to the building sector is perhaps not uh, not worth knowing ladies and gentlemen it's my pleasure and privilege uh, to introduce mr v suresh mr v suresh chairman of the indian building council has got more than 5 decades of experience and with regard to the uh, building sector uh, he is the vice chairman of uh, national building board of india the chairman of housing sectional committee member of the smart city committee of bureau of indian standards he served as the chairman and managing director of hatco and he has been a fellow of uh, various organizations including the institution of engineers Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors, Indian Institute of Architects, Institution of Public Health Engineers, and so on. Mr. V. Suresh has contributed extensively to the building sector through his various initiatives as the chairman of the Indian Green Building Council, and also his deep involvement with regard to the Good Governance Initiative, through which he is helping the Indian uh, cities uh, through uh, to improve their uh, overall performance and make them more uh, more livable. Mr. V. Suresh has. Uh, received several awards many of many of more than 16 awards uh, 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 two or three of which which are worth mentioning cidc industry dawn award of 2011 ibl lifetime achievement award for, for year 2014 and uh, he also is a senior fellow of the indian green building council without uh, much further ado uh, it's our pleasure and privilege to have mr v suresh addressing us may i request you sir to take over mr v suresh please good evening good evening to all our distinguished participants who have come here and thank you very much giri for that uh, very detailed introduction and following ravi chandran unikeshan and ranganath's brilliant presentation of the distinguished lecture series under the cai ambala is a pleasure honor and privilege for me to make the presentation on the energy efficiency in buildings and the built environment a special welcome to all the uh, chairman of the centers of excellence of the gpc who are contributing in the sector in a large way and to our own executive board members of the igpc and the chair and co-chair of all our 27 chapters large number of our uh, all stakeholders and consultants and uh, uh, builders developers who are all participating here and the great honor therefore to make this brief presentation now on the energy efficiency in buildings and the built environment uh, well uh, we have a situation there in the indian context the per capita energy consumption i'm getting straight away to the topic no history geography straight away onto the topic there uh, we are at uh, just about 1181 uh, kilowatt hour per person per year much much lower a 10 times bigger is the united states taking around 12900 uh, uh, units per person per year the global average itself is a double of that and uh, most importantly among the all the sectors into which energy is coming over there the building sector in india it consumes over 
30% of the total energy needs annually. So very significant component. Any impact that we can make in this sector is going to be great because this is an area where phenomenal growth has come in the last five years time period, be it the smart city, the Amru city, the housing for all under the PMAY or the initiatives of the uh, uh, special economic zones or the activities in the port sector, airport sector, so many other sectors there. Annual growth is a sector, 8% slight dip over the last few months time period, but this will catch up. And this is an area where the building development uh, is taking place. Can you believe we are adding around 700 to 900 million square meter of build space every year? All the asset classes, the uh, industrial building, the residential building, the commercial building, the retail building, hotel building, hospital building, uh, uh, then the educational uh, issue, uh, any any asset class that you have, all put together is the building sector. And that's an area where uh, phenomenal amount of growth are there. And most importantly, uh, the way in which the growth is now going to get geared up over there after the post-COVID situation now, 70% of the buildings are yet to be built. And by 2030, so the next 10 years, you will see what all has been built in all these years so far all over the uh, uh, millennium of the millennium. We'll get into building as much as about a doubling of all this particular thing in the next about 10 years time period. A great opportunity for all of us to build upon. And whatever we do in this particular sector, we always try to do it in line with the national codes and standards on energy efficiency. The first among the list over there is the National Building Code of India 2016 version. I'm very happy and proud that after Sustainable Development Goal to the year 2030, adopted by 193 countries, National Building Code of India is the only country in the world where the approach to sustainability has been added in part 11, uh, under the leadership of our ex-chairman, Dr. P.C. Jain, whom we remember very fondly, and also a special chapter on assets and facility management, which is part 12. And of course, all the building service on uh, air conditioning, lift installation, plumbing installation, firefighting installation, electrical installations, all the things that are going to the building and plumbing services, and none of them can work without energy. So therefore, that's uh, the more, the biggest framework. Then we have, of course, the Energy Conservation Building Code, the latest version is 2018 version there. Earlier, they were covering larger, smaller component done by the Bureau of Energy Efficiency under the Ministry of Power. And they have done a great job in getting this new document. We are inspired, we adopt, adapt all those norms in a large way. They did not cover residential, but now for the first time, they have brought in this new component of the Eco Niva Samhita. It is to cover all the residential building beyond a certain area, 500 square meters of plot area, more than 20 houses, and also the energy consumption level. So residences are also now coming to it in a big way. But as one of the biggest inspiration is also the ISHRE, which is the Indian Society for Heating, Refrigeration, and uh, Engineering. And they got in the wonderful IEQ standard. So large number of uh, benchmarks in terms of uh, the, uh, the technologies to be used in this area, the levels of energy consumption coming are all derived out of that. Equally is the plumbing code, uniform plumbing code, wherein we utilize the uh, inputs for all your water supply, sanitation, and nothing can happen without pumping of all those liquid in one area to the other, in building on various heights, including firefighting system, uh, the systems to go on. So all our rating system are entirely in line with the national codes and standards. So when I say rating system, energy efficiency is an important component of all the green rating system. You'll come to know of that in the next few minutes time. Let's, let's have a look at what all the IGBC has done in this particular area. We are, we are the one among the few uh, green building councils in the world around 67 in number under the World Green Building Council, we have 26 rating system. Unlike many who try to adopt the same rating system for all concerned, we don't believe in that. We have separate one for the commercial components. So many of them are there under that particular one, including the existing building, new building, campuses, green data centers, net zero buildings, resorts, including the new green services added now, residential of all category, not only the middle and high income, but also the weaker section, low income, affordable one, including the uh, issues on transits on metro, as well as rail and other related component, all the industrial building for factory and uh, as he said, health and well-being of hospitals, healthcare, green and uh, 
well-being standard, education, and also a place of worship. And we added beyond buildings, the first one again to get in beyond green buildings or green built environment, building plus the infrastructure together. So we got into the green cities. The first one in the world to do that is we about six years back, we got the IGBC green cities for the greenfield project, IGBC green cities for the uh, uh, brownfield project or existing cities, green villages, green townships, green landscape, including green habitat. So you'll understand the reason you will immediately know it, the extent of consumption of energy, as you would see from the last bullet that I put over there, and it can range from a small number percentage to a large percentage, depending upon the use of that particular building. In a, in a data center, it's an energy guzzler. But whereas if you're talking to a small residential building with not much of energy needed in a small component. So we all of the rating system in respect of water needs or energy needs and other needs are all qualified with respect to the use of the resources that we keep in view. Optimum utilization of all the resources, efficient utilization is the way forward for us to go in a sustainable manner. And weightage in terms of energy efficiency itself ranges from about 20 to 75. I can open out when and when you come, when you come in the green building rating. And this is an area which cannot be done by uh, an energy auditor or an electrical engineer alone. This is an area where everybody has got to put their mind together, all stakeholders together. A good owner of the particular building, it can be government, central government, state government, a private sector, a builder, developer. And then the all the other people later on linked with the particular area, namely the uh, occupants will come later, whether the architect, a civil engineer, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, firefighting, the green building consultant, the landscape architect, because you also want the uh, heat island effect to be reduced in a large way. And of course, most important at the end of it, occupant, individual house occupants, or in the hospitals, or in the hotels, or uh, public spaces, or office spaces, all those things are very important. For every one of them, this matters there, and we have to involve, uh, and those areas, those projects where they are really involved, all concerned over there, that's where the biggest success stories have been written. Now, I'd like to take it forward on the next side on the uh, uh, approach to the whole thing. There are two ways we can do this particular thing, and two ways, and both ways have to be done together. And one is the passive design. What an architect can do on the three dimensional space that he can create in a building or a series of buildings or whatever, and vertically, horizontally, all the spaces with respect to the nature, the location, the solar path, and other related things, climatological details that you have. And based on the orientation, the sun paths we can do in a large way, daylighting design, uh, skylight, light pipes, and other related ones and then the efficient building envelope to be done. That's very, very important component. How can you ensure that this energy efficient building envelope that you create into high and utilizing high performance glass or shading devices for that matter? The idea is to get in the light and not the heat in. I mean, that's a very interesting component. And uh, uh, we also are equally important that the building blocks which are there, the walling and the roofing component will be the AAC block or fly ash based cement blocks, insulation material, Etc. because they are the one who ensure that the heat gain inside the building is reduced in a substantial way. Of course, the components like the building shape and the self-shading uh, components become equally important. Our own uh, organization under the CII, the Green Pro products are important. Thousand odd products have come where all the building materials also got the Green Pro certification. And those particular products, if you use a walling roofing, will also go a long way in one of those particular segments coming. Next component will be the active one. If the passive is over, the active will come. The active component will cover every aspects of the design of the, um, what do you call, thermal uh, comfort level, the condition level, uh, the uh, comfort level of air conditioning component, are using the high cop chillers or absorption chillers, and these are all big guzzlers of energy. Air conditioning has one of the important component or the issues can we do with alternate oil like geothermal or tunnel, uh, 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 which can be also done below the ground and wind towers in some of the buildings have been done. Many buildings of our own things are there. Or more importantly, pumps and motors and fans and controls, variable frequency drives, well, how you can do that in building. Every building would require that. And therefore, uh, very important. Equally important, the lights and lighting control, vertical trans, the lift installation, the building automation, the uh, firefighting system for the, for the plumbing system, for each one of those particular things over there, you need 
substantial ammonia. So what is that we can do in those equipments and systems in a large way to bring in energy efficiency is the next major building work. So a good combination of the passive and active design, wherein not only the civil engineer, the architect, the mechanical engineer, air conditioning engineer, electrical engineer, and all concerned, uh, uh, the lighting engineer all will come over there. As a result of all that, we're extremely happy. Our first certification came in 2003, when you had the first 20,000 building. But now today, when you say, if you used to take about 10 megawatt per million square feet of the green footprint there, and we're happy to know, today it's come down to seven megawatt per million square. Imagine 30% saving, directly coming on the connected load. And that's a very, very significant contribution, I would say. And our, our aim is to still bring it down. As I said, on the passages of the building orientation, depending upon the uh, way, the whole thing, the window opening, where they should come, et cetera, one of the building down in Chandigarh, where the, uh, the location of the glass and other related things are so beautifully uh, done, and therefore the heat, heat gain is much lower, but still daylighting is utilized in the best possible way. Or you get, get across from the walling side to the next side on the roof side. Let's get on to the next slide on the roofing side. And roof is a very major component, wherein previously we used to put it all dumped with all the utilities on top of that, but now we have the concept of cool roof coming. We don't want uh, any heat gain coming from the roof side or the green vegetation, the green, uh, the roof green is also an important component coming or located for solar photovoltaic for renewable energy generation is an equally an important component to it. So it does two, three things in one shot. You are able to reduce the heat gain. You're also utilizing that through other methodologies that you can have for reducing that besides the insulation for the uh, other technologies for the roofing and insulation, the green vegetation will also bring it down in a very large way. So combination of all these put together. And then comes to the most important component, glazing. And I'm happy the NBC 2016 has given a very, very detailed coverage on what exactly should be done on the structural glazing and related well with the right U values and R values there. Previously, you did it, double glaze unit in the early 2000, about 20 or 17 odd years back, uniformly used for all facades. You can't do that now. Today, you'll have to high performance glass, use based on orientation, the heat gain, and solar heat uh, gain coefficient is a very important thing. And the U values of the materials are very important. And today, the technology providers have got so much amount of the technologies they can uh, bring in for, uh, for bringing down the reduction in the uh, heat gain with uh, glasses of various uh, uh, specifications and uh, thicknesses, and also quality parameters there, including high visible light transmissions also coming in a large way. A little later, you will also see uh, how some more company come. Cooling efficiency, something you can see immediately. I'm sure each one of the audience over there, I'm sure you'll have your living room or your bedroom, whatever, around 150 to 200 square feet. How much tons of air condition? Ah, one ton we can put for 150 square feet, all you'll say, of the order. If I have a bigger room of 250, make a two ton air condition. That's the way we used to do as a thumb rule. But ladies and gentlemen, we have come a long way from 2003 days to today. Can you believe that in the latest amount of all the green buildings that we have over there, you can go up to even 600 to 800 square feet to be done in one ton of air conditioning. Imagine if the total area is supporting one ton of air conditioning for every 150 square feet. I do for only one for every 750 square feet. Straight away, five times the area is being covered. That means your load on the air conditioning has come down substantially. And so also the electrical load for that. Your, your saving in the energy component is roughly 75% in this one shot alone. It's a phenomenal thing. This is an area where substantial amount of things have come in, whether it is going to, it had a previous uh, pop value of five, which is a coefficient of performance. Uh, we try to do that by a lot of technologies or chillers uh, with magnetic levitation chillers with very high pop value, even up to eight. And these, these are, that means the technologies that are used in these particular systems are so good that they are able to bring down energy costs in a large way. Or, or let us get down, leave out the air conditioning area, you know, other most important controls on that. For example, pumps are a very, very important component. And uh, this is a very major component in all your buildings, be it on water or sewage or, uh, or firefighting or various other related use or AHU fans, etc. We have got, we can't think of anything other than variable frequency drives as an integrated, integral part of the design. 
and therefore vfd has become a primary secondary chilled water pumps condenser water pump ahu fan name it and there you have it you discuss with the uh, electrical engineers for dealing with each one of the particular thing you should insist on only the right level of technologies and equipment to deal with this particular thing over there well that's a bigger one that think of something pretty close to us of which all of us are aware there's a simple thing like lighting lighting previously i know we require so many lumens of lighting for each of the surfaces or work work area if you take out 1.5 watts per square feet was the amount of energy needed with that was a original uh, uh, fluorescent lamp and then you got the cfl then you got the led and you'll be very very happy to know we have come down today about 0.6 watts per square feet can you see the amount of energy saving 60% is a saving that's come only on energy all because we decided the right level for the lighting one so therefore the overall energy required will cover all this and the right level that all this put together is what what we have been able to achieve from the uh, igbc site from one building of 20000 square feet which is with a very proud uh, building which you will see a little later also a net zero building the green uh, building uh, the business center and the breaking news uh, today i am very happy to share with everybody uh, on the 3rd of august that we are across the 7.5 billion square feet of green footprint uh, at the end of july end or first uh, first of august through 5975 projects and our own vision is india at 75 ca also adopts india at 75 that is 2022 we'll achieve 10 billion square feet that means 750 crore square feet of buildings have been covered under the igbc rating system and we'll become a 1000 crore square feet of green footprint by 2022 by uh, august 2000 uh, august uh, 15 2022 we'll achieve that Master level, we have crossed the 7.5 billion in the last about uh, one month. Very interesting projects coming over there. And what benefits are coming to it? It's a phenomenally large operating cost comes in a very large way. You'll be surprised. No capital cost, cost and operating cost. And this is one reason why the users are now demanding. It is not the it is not the is the demand side. input coming namely all the users all the it it companies corporates they all ask is it a green building because i want the running cost of the building coming down the energy cost has got to come down so it is not only the rental cost which is a capital cost rental cost has to come down and as you are aware the national building code has booked for the first time the life cycle costing which is capital cost plus the operating cost and put together is what you will have to uh, achieve for sustained saving on that and i'm very happy that energy saving alone in all our projects give from a 30% to 50% level in addition to that my other resource is water plus other reduction in uh, investments in some of those particular areas which can make the right level of impact and if you have to achieve that look at the amount of thing out of the 5000 odd which are all rated but 2000 plus projects are already certified which means the buildings are already not on paper they have been completed they have been occupied it is an operation commission operation from those 2021 actually fully certified uh, uh, functional building i'm very happy to convey to everyone that 8.71 billion units of kilowatt hour has been saved per annum and if only this will be just enough to take care of the complete housing 1.75 crore village rural houses about 17.5 uh, uh, million houses would have been covered under this particular uh, category and i'm very happy that that particular thing is already being utilized in a large area for the rural housing in a, this way and uh, the impact of energy reduction is also on the carbon footprint carbon footprint is a very important component for every 1 kilowatt hour of energy that you are uh, producing over there ladies and gentlemen you should understand that you are adding 0.8 uh, uh, kg of uh, carbon dioxide into the air that means more energy consumption means more carbon dioxide footprint coming over there and because you reduced all that the co2 also has come down 8.1 million tons per annum is our contribution because of the energy efficiency factors which otherwise would have been there to take care of nine the pollution from 9.1 million cars off the road can you just believe believe the type of impact that it can come for the overall quality of the air that we breathe and other related thing and out of the 17 uh, uh, sustainable development goals reduction of the carbon footprint is one of the very important component and how does how can we make it happen we have to do that 
uh, unfolding the for the future buildings, we require a lot of interesting changes to be brought in this particular area. Let's try, let's try to have a look at some of them. Today, uh, maybe if I am able to do about 10% of my houses through the green building certification, not only, not only ours, but others also, and we 40% are complying. They are not come for certification, but they say, yes, I'm doing anyway. Uh, I'm reducing energy, et cetera, et cetera. And if they claim to do it, and the balance 50, no confirmation at all. But possibly about 20 years from now, with all the type of efforts that IGBC is doing and uh, Bureau of Energy Efficiency is doing, and so many of us putting together sustainable development goals being coming over there, we think that we will have about 90% level in the next about 20 years time period to go on to the other side. And uh, still 5% compliant, non-compliant component will be 5% uh, over there. It's a, it's a big wish list. Many people might question this figure on that, but we have some solid reasons for why we have done this particularly. We can always discuss that. And the uh, next one is just trying to cover the whole thing component of how does it uh, uh, make it happen. And, but they will anyway be compliant from this particular thing. And our effort is to reach out to the builders, developers, uh, corporate builders, including government and other agencies, each one of them, how they can contribute to this particular one. And therefore, if you want to get into energy savings, also make that particular building a green building for integrated approach as well. And how can you do that? Envelope design, even, even static shading device, you have seen all this particular thing, a dynamic shading device is based on sun path analysis that we keep on for each location there. How do you locate those particular sun, including vertical fenestration that can come in this area? We give special weightages on the, all that. As I, as I said, all this is to cut the heat inside to come into the building and not the light in a large way. And that particular aspect is important. And the next major thing that comes out is the envelope design. Envelope design is a window to wall ratio, high performance glass, the photovoltaic integrated glazing. The best success story is going to be this now. The, the glass itself to have the renewable energy production, PV integrated glazing, vertical fenestration, I made a mention of that, insulated roof or cold roof, and using increased use of fly ash blocks or other products which are thermally very, very efficient. And ladies and gentlemen, we are very lucky and fortunate that India has got 95% of the time for the clear design sky. Whereas all over Europe, UK, uh, uh, northern part of uh, America and Canada, et cetera, et cetera, they have got a standard overcast sky. So you have the Suri Bagan available for you for 95% of the time. Therefore, that's a great opportunity for you to use that. Use it through Skylight and various other options which can come. You should utilize that in your envelope design and the related action coming on that. The next major chunk I, I, I feel is the low energy cooling system that we should get on, which can be used on uh, whether, the, whether it's a wind tower or uh, earth air tunnel or a geothermal uh, uh, component to be done to combine with the alternate air conditioning system or along with the uh, district cooling system could be a thing which has come already in large neighboring countries there. India has not. Uh, maybe Gift City would do that as a particular thing like water being served, power being served, information are being served. This also, your cool air also will be one of the things that will be supplied from the district cooling system where the cost can come down to as low, as even the best efficient centralized plant system to this, it can bring it down to as low as about 50% of the cost to the district cooling system. India has not done it. But India, what has done is this, the radiant cooling is a very good innovation that has come over there and uh, Infosys has proved that so beautifully over there of under the bottom of the roof and including the wall and the roof component, the radiant cooling, the chiller pipes being put as part of that particular one, and both in the floor as well as the roof component, how well you can install that is indicated there. And uh, the project of, uh, like many, it's not only Infosys, so many other people have done it, but they are again one among the pioneers to bring it down, the air conditioning load, as I said, from the 200 uh, square feet per uh, ton to, uh, uh, air conditioning about 800 uh, square feet per ton in a large way. Uh, my next big uh, uh, big ticket item is going to be renewable energy. Take my word, ladies and gentlemen, 10 to 15 percent is what we are penetration is happening at this particular point of time. Uh, we are not happy on that. We have to get it forward to at least about 80 percent of the one solar PV, solar thermal for the hot water including I when I say renewable, renewable can also be wind and biomass, mini hydro, hybrid RE system, micro wind turbine, 
and also in the various other vehicles, including on uh, metro and other related component also will be coming. The right time for us to just have a look on from where the hell the energy is coming. Uh, I think that will be a very important uh, component. Uh, if you look forward, India's cumulative installed capacity of power, and we have uh, about 3.71 uh, uh, lakh megawatt of power coming in India, around 62% coming from the thermal power, which is bad because coal, lignite, gas, as well as uh, uh, diesel, all together as a thermal one. About 2.37 uh, lakh megawatt is coming under that. You have a uh, hydro, not a very big number, around uh, 45,700 uh, megawatts coming under that. But on renewable, we have roughly around 87,000 that you add that uh, component of the solar plus wind and the others together uh, in a large way. But this is where we'll have to really have a major multiplier effect to be brought in this particular one. Uh, for example, uh, we just had less than a month back, the Honorable Prime Minister inaugurating the largest solar power project in Reva, Madhya Pradesh. I'm sure all of you must have watched and very proud that uh, uh, this is being done. And uh, India has so far only around 36,000, uh, nearly around 34,600 uh, uh, um, megawatt of uh, renewable energy. Uh, but then we'll have to uh, escalate that to about one lakh or three times multiplier in that component as far as the solar energy is concerned. Civil wind energy may go up to 60. Or in short, renewable, renewable energy alone from about 87,000 uh, megawatt so far done, we'll have to come to about 1.75 lakh megawatt of renewable energy at India at 75. Okay, so very important tall order. Large number of initiatives are happening there. And our next big ticket number that we have done is called the net zero building or near zero building, where all the energy required for the building is done through other sources now than the grid energy. And how do you deal with that particular thing in a very large area? Many net zero buildings are, for example, today the Cochin International Airport, they require about uh, 30 megawatt of power. They do produce around 37 megawatt of power through the source, all the renewable energy. Seven megawatt is already available every day which can be utilized for others so therefore it's not only net zero but also positive an area where all of us are working on it we are also uh, aware that we can't stretch it beyond a certain limit on the potential for the renewable energy if it is not there don't be unhappy go for near zero that will be that the next best thing that can, can come over there like whatever the new normal uh, in the content and then this is going to be extended beyond not only the net zero energy net zero water and net zero waste and net zero carbon. IGBC is already geared up to deal with the waste as well as uh, water and carbon in the next two months time period. Get another significant area which can, which all of you can relate in your own life. Just get around from your living room to your bedroom to your kitchen and your bathroom. You get all this. Have you seen all this, uh, each one of this component of the uh, star rated uh, a system which is energy conservation measures. Each of the equipment and machinery they have covered on that, be it the air conditioners or the LED bulb or a tubular lamp or a transformer or AC flow standing, color TV, electric geyser, washing machine, refrigerator. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, one, two, three stars, we can save roughly between 10 to 20% or even 18% if I may say. And maybe four and five star, you can get them into 25 to 30 or 40%. So what will be the additional cost, marginal additional cost for buying one of these particular, each of the equipment, every house has this particular one. You can more than make it up in about six months or eight months of saving in the energy bill cost. That's the type of payback period that you're coming on that. And we insist, we insist on all our particular project as far as besides what you do for your design wall, roof and other systems in as far as these small electrical appliances, you utilize all these particular aspects. And this brings us to another most important uh, component on what gets measured gets managed. It's a very important message I want to say. At the end of the day, building is performing well or not building perform. How do you decide that? Unless you have a good building management system to see whether each one of the system are functioning, you are saving on the energy, saving on water, saving on various other things, air conditioning, load to come, where to put it, population less, therefore I don't want to cool more, therefore put light only where it is needed. So right little sensors being put to deal with that are major component which you're already doing through the BMS uh, uh, inputs. 
the NBC also has got a chapter on information communication technology to provide that. But our idea is to see how very soon, very soon, artificial intelligence, IoT in buildings is going to come in a very large way for each one of the systems that you can have can be linked up through the command control center component. The smart cities have done a good initiative in some of these particular one. As you would see a little later, uh, as a matter, the very next slide is going to go on that. The buildings are not enough. You got to go into the built environment. Built environment as a beyond buildings, large number of buildings and the infrastructure put together. The first one to go for the rating for the green cities, both the uh, 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 cities of the greenfield cities like uh, the Dolera or Amravati or the New Calcutta or uh, Siri cities or Mahindra city, etc. But then we also have a thing for the uh, uh, brownfield cities also to bring in. And our idea is if I presently, maybe a few are there very shortly in the next 20 years, each have to gather to this because they will not get the energy if you don't do that conservation coming in a large way. Very happy to share that uh, out of the uh, brownfield project, the IGBC. Uh, Rajkot uh, Smart City has got the IGBC's Green City rating platinum has gone to the Rajkot City. They also got another major international award just around five days back. I'm sure all of you must be keeping track of that. Rajkot as a city. And the idea is to develop a smart, livable, and iconic city of Gujarat with sustainable and growth, uh, growth and sustainable development. Can you believe energy saving alone from this project with 65 million kilowatt hour per year? Street lighting 100% to 8.5 million a kilowatt per hour per year for only for the street lighting, 100% uh, LED lamp, power from solar power plant, 55.6 million K, kWh per year. Waste to energy, waste to energy is going to be a big ticket number. Uh, India is planning uh, waste to energy from the solid waste coming from various other waste coming. This is about 1.02 million uh, uh, kWh per year. And in the next uh, few years, all the cities uh, this this particular unit is going to contribute well. As I said, uh, the greenfield, uh, the city, the green cities component is a major success story. As you can see, uh, which are all the cities which have come there, like Dulera, Shri City, New City, uh, Mahindra City, uh, Amravati, Gift City, uh, Bitkin City, Jajar City, etc. They are all the uh, greenfield cities, new land. But existing are Rajkot, Vishakhapatnam, Panchkula, Bhopal. Kedarnath is a hill, hill, it's got an IGBC platinum. So therefore, these are areas where phenomenal amount of input can come. To me, beyond the building, the built environment, the city's contribution to energy saving is going to be substantial. We have not been tapping this so far, but now it will come in a very large way. And I'm very happy. And can you believe it's about 576,600 acres of large development is covered just by this 14 odd project. You can imagine not only the city level, what can happen, but then the buildings coming in those particular cities also will have an impact. Wonderful. All these are good to hear. But then how many of the people are fully aware of what all we talk about? Uh, we have to create a major, uh, major effort for Awareness creation, which will lead to appreciation, and then will lead to application. Today, a small set of professionals uh, who are around, who are maybe electrical engineer, a few energy auditors, a few aircon engineers, etc., or lift engineers, they must be moving around, or lighting people who are having products to go. They'll be talking about this, and that, that's not enough. You got to have this particular thing to provide to all the stakeholders, including the common man. It has got to be a people's movement to come over there. Green has to become a bedrock in the building design. So you'll see the participation component is going to be all the stakeholders, as you can see on the right side. I would like to take this forward in a very large way to make it as a people's movement. Uh, as I said, the owners, of course, have to come be it the government or the state government or the local government uh, coming in a large way. The developers on the left side who are equally important as the building development people in a in a very big way, and of course, occupants will come. Of course, the builders, the engineers, the architect, and all the consultants will come in a, a very large way. But I put an important component, the one next to owner, and that's a regulatory authority. I'm a little unhappy on this particular progress there. For example, the uh, Energy Conservation Building Code, uh, the department under Ministry of Power are very keen. They, some of the states, they made it mandatory. In some of them, they are not made it mandatory. Therefore, some may do it. But then that's only the concern there. Does any of the municipal commissioners, the city engineer, the architects dealing with the building development are aware of this particular thing for implementation? The answer is no. So you've got to take it forward to each of them. I put also the 
uh, homemaker, the children. Now, with the COVID situation and the phenomenal amount of opportunity to work uh, with uh, uh, digital transformation coming, it can be entertainment, education, work from home, etc. This is going to be an important component on energy saving related aspects. All are going to put their act together to make it a Jan Andolan. That's what exactly I'm trying to look at it. And that's where the way forward uh, last slide is coming on your uh, frame there. Design approaches will undergo phenomenally architectural engineering and also uh, all design issues will come, including air conditioning. All the design is a larger word that I come over there to cover all these uh, different aspects there. Products and equipment, which is the one going to contribute on the active side in a large way. And technologies which can leapfrog, those particular technologies which can bring down one fifth of the type of uh, energy than what it was needed about 10 years, 15 years back. And uh, uh, last and most importantly, a massive campaign on awareness. Make this as a every day as a story on water saving, energy saving component as a very major uh, idea or uh, for action. And I'm sure with the type of threats that IGBZ is giving uh, for the green building movement, would charter and pave the way to become uh, world class, and that's also one of our goal uh, to achieve by 2025. And I'm sure we'll achieve that. There are a large number of benchmarks we identified for ourselves. At the end of it, if you do all that together, ladies and gentlemen, you save energy, you save your future and the present. Very importantly, not the future alone. We can do start doing now. Many existing buildings are also undergoing changes happening. They missed the bus earlier. They're also undergoing a lot of retrofits to come to bring energy savings. Some of the biggest corporates that you have in this country or buildings 100 years old are also going through this particular process dealing with that. On that happy note, I want to say thank you very much for the opportunity given to deliver this uh, address. I'll be most happy.